Welcome to the Audacious Freedom Podcast, episode number nine. I'm calling it Devastating Loss That Led to My Daughter. I am your host, Dee Dee Mendez. I am a storyteller, a perpetual student of self-development, and an audacious life liver, among many other areas of expertise and interests. I am most recently the founder of audaciousfreedom.com. I come to you, my listeners, with stories about what I learn, read, observe and experience in the world today. I'm inspired by so many other story storytellers and I'm told that I inspire others with my own stories. Again, I come to you today with episode number nine, devastating loss that led to my daughter. In my last episode, I told the story of my journey to have a baby on my own with a known donor. My daughter is now 11 and we've been thriving as a complete family of two. The part of the story I didn't tell is that there would not have been the journey that led me to create my daughter without my having experienced devastating and sudden loss. Maybe everyone won't identify with my loss that I'm going to tell you about. Those of you dog people will get it. And many of you dog people may have experienced something similar. So here goes this part of my life. A few years after my ex-husband's sudden announcement that he was happy with all aspects of his life, and he was very specific that he was fine with his work and life in general, and he very specifically said he was unhappy with me and wanted to separate. As you know from my last Audacious Freedom podcast episode that I saw it therapy, got diagnosed with depression and OCD light, as they were calling it, air quotes. And I was medicated for a couple of years to sort of recalibrate my mental health. By the way, I want to say two things here. One, this was the late 1990s and pharmaceutical pharmaceutical companies were all about depression diagnoses and prescribing Prozac and his family of meds. So much so that even general practitioners could diagnose depression and prescribe medication for it. What the fuck? And two, I bought the diagnoses of depression and OCD light because it gave me something to do and focus on for those first couple years after the sudden end of my marriage. Because when my ex-husband asked for the separation, I learned very quickly that what he meant was that he wanted a divorce. We tried one couples therapy session that lasted literally five minutes. I wanted to work on the marriage and he didn't. That was it. End of therapy and end of the marriage. So my diagnosis when I look back on on it was situational. Here go air quotes again. Something big happened in my life, something that I did not ask for or expect. And it threw me for a loop and on a bit of a downward spiral, understandably. Anyway, a couple years later, I decided it would be fun to get a puppy, something to focus on outside of myself. And there was no question the type of puppy I wanted. I wanted a black pug. I had grown up with boxers, loving the pushed in and serious faces, but I didn't want that big of a dog. I wanted a dog with a pushed in and serious face. And I'd always loved my college roommate's black pug, Muggsy. What a face and what a big attitude in such a small package. So I Googled pug breeders in in New York City, and I immediately found Pat the Pug Lady in Staten Island. So off I went on the ferry to meet her two litters of black pug puppies. They had the same father and obviously different mothers. I was immediately in love with two of them, a girl puppy and a boy puppy. The girl was hilarious and wild. She'd give me a bunch of kisses all up in my nose and everything. Then run off and do her thing. The boy wasn't as much of a kisser. He was a snuggler in my lap and he'd nuzzle his little face into my neck. I loved them both and I chose the girl puppy. She seemed more independent and more my speed. I worried that the boy puppy would be a little high maintenance and he needed a different mom than I could be at that time in my life. So I brought the girl puppy home and looked up girl puppy names online. 
I knew I wanted a two syllable name and something that ended with the E sound because I had read that dogs have an easier time recognizing their name if it ended with an E sound. I don't remember if I debated names. I just remember that I named my girl puppy Cookie and it suited her and me. And Cookie and I went everywhere together. And not just everywhere in New York City and Manhattan and the Upper West Side where we lived. And by the way, she got so much attention on our walks and got lots of petting from strangers and famous people. Kevin Bacon and his kids, Ali Sheedy and her daughter, Cindy Lauper. Of course, I never acknowledged who they were. We were just neighbors sort of bonding over Cookie's cuteness. And when I tell you that Cookie and I went everywhere together, I really mean everywhere. To the nail salon where she sat on my lap every week while I got a pedicure and manicure on Sunday evenings. She went clothes shopping with me, holiday gift shopping. We'd sit outside together for lunch or dinner at any of the many dog-friendly restaurants in Manhattan. Just Cookie and me. I'd take her off lead before 9 a.m. in Central Park, and I'd always have to rely on the kindness and quickness of another dog parent to help me catch Cookie when it was time to go home. While she learned her name quickly, Cookie did not like to come to me when called. She thought it was funny to run away. When she was six months old, I decided I wanted to take Cookie to Europe, to one city for 10 days to get to know the city and just hang out with Cookie there. I was debating between two dog friendly cities, Paris and Amsterdam. I decided on Amsterdam because I had never been there. By the way, I know when people think of Amsterdam, they think of the red light district and legal weed in the coffee shops. I wasn't thinking about any of that. I just wanted to walk the city with Cookie and to try a new cafe every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's funny how many people approached me on that trip and spoke to me in Dutch. Turns out when you walk around with a puppy, people think you're a local. We'd always get by in English, Spanish, or even a little bit of French when they realized that I wasn't a native. Cookie traveled with me multiple times to visit family in San Francisco, LA, and South Florida. She even accompanied me on many, many work trips to Tampa and Hartford, Connecticut, and my company approved for me to stay in different hotels than everyone else because theirs weren't dog-friendly hotels. Cookie was my baby girl and true companion. I photographed her all the time, and this was back before cameras on our phones, and I developed the pictures by the dozens and mailed them to family and friends as postcards from Cookie in her handwriting. There's my air quotes again. And her handwriting, which I, I wrote, it was meant to resemble that of a, a, of a child, a child's writing. I'm telling you, Cookie was really my baby girl. She had countless toys, sweaters, and even a raincoat. I'm getting the idea right now that when I launch my audaciousfreedom.com website, that I want to include some photos of her as a loving tribute to my Cookie. Oh my God, I'm remembering how sweet my mom and dad were with her, allowing her to jump up on their bed. Um, one time when I was looking for Cookie, uh, one morning I was visiting my parents and I couldn't find her anywhere. I finally knocked on my parents' bathroom door and my mother said to come in. I kid you not, Cookie was sitting on my mom's lap while my mother was sitting on the toilet, literally reading a book. So let me make sure this is clear. Cookie was sitting on my mom's lap while my mom was trying to do her morning business. Oh my God. Cookie sure was something and my mom was a trooper. Next thing I knew, Cookie turned four years old on April 25th. Soon after that in July, I found out that my firm an employer of 10 years, PricewaterhouseCoopers was conducting planned layoffs and that I would be offered a generous severance package. My last day would be in early August. That last week of work for PwC, I took Cookie to the vet for a regular checkup and Dr. Dina Long discovered an abscessed tooth, an abscessed tooth. I'll never forget how she said, ack, we'll have to get this out so there's no infection. Right, I said, okay. 
let's schedule it for as soon as possible. As a good dog mom, and given that I would not be working the next week, I scheduled it for the Monday. Dr. Long said, you know, I will not be here that day, but my husband will be. Dr. Long didn't actually say my, my husband. Uh, it's just that I can't remember his name now. And they were actually a husband and wife veterinarian team and had a young son together. I always thought that they were an odd match for a couple. She was young, beautiful, smart, and personable. He seemed much older, maybe even by 20 years. He was not particularly attractive. He smelled like cigarettes. Um, he clearly smoked. Um, and he was very businesslike and had a terrible bedside manner. I paused for a minute, minute and briefly considered scheduling the procedure when Dr. Long could do it, but I decided to go with the early, earlier date available to give Cookie the best and quickest care. The next week I took Cookie back and handed her off to the technician, the technician that was not my favorite technician. Cookie did not look back at me while my not favorite technician took her back for my not favorite vet to remove her abscess tooth. I walked back home and not having told any friends or family that Cookie was having this procedure, I just, because there was nothing to worry about with this simple procedure on a young and healthy four-year-old pug. So again, not having told anyone, I just kept myself busy while waiting for the call to pick Cookie back up. I emptied all the makeup and hair products from my bath and vanity to reorganize and clean out anything I wasn't using anymore. With everything still spread out on the bathroom counter, I heard my phone ring. I went to my desk and answered the call. It was my not favorite technician. He said, Dr. X or whatever his name was, would like to speak with you. And he put me on hold. Something, I sensed something was up. So I picked up a pencil and notepad and braced myself to write down and understand whatever he found in Cookie and to give her the best treatment possible. Dr. X got on the phone and said, I don't quite know how to tell you this. Cookie expired. I couldn't fucking believe it. There was nothing to write down. There was so much to process. What had happened? And did he really say expired? Cookie had had a rare allergic reaction to the anesthesia and she went into anaphylactic shock. He couldn't bring her back. I raced outside to catch a cab, a cab to the vet's office and I made three phone calls, one to my sister, one to my friends who lived a few blocks away and who were the dog parents of Cookie's brother, Rudy, and the third call to my downstairs neighbor and fellow dog mom, Beth. I cried and cried and we all tried to process the suddenness and shock and unfairness of it all. She was only four. She was supposed to, air quotes, live for many more years. Rudy's parents, Carol and Bill, both immediately left work, went home to pick up Rudy and we planned to meet me at my apartment when I got back from saying goodbye to Cookie. My not favorite technician took me to see Cookie. She had been wrapped in a pink blanket and was still intubated. I pet her and cried and nuzzled my face into hers. It's been 15 years since this awful day and I felt nauseous and my makeup was running down my face as I prepared to record this episode earlier this morning. I want to be sure to get to the point of this episode. How did sudden loss and tragedy lead to my having a baby? We're almost there. Bear with me a few minutes more so I can tell you about the call I got from Dr. Dean along a couple days later. I just had to call you. I just had to call you because I saw the look on your face when we scheduled Cookie's procedure. I saw your hesitation and I want you to know that no matter what I think of Dr. What's his name in my personal life, I think he's an excellent veterinarian. And again, she didn't say Dr. What's his name. I just don't remember his name. I think he's an excellent veterinarian, she said. Wait, what are you getting a divorce? My mind raised. Yes, but we are continuing our practice together, and I do think he's an excellent vet. What happened to Cookie would have happened if I did the procedure. She had an allergic reaction that no one would have predicted in a young dog. We don't do blood tests on such young dogs before going under anesthesia. I told her that I appreciated her call and her insights. Still, I said I would have preferred Cookie's last moments 
to have been with my favorite technician and with you. Although I think her independent and playful personality would have would not have known the difference. At least that's what I told myself to get through the guilt of not having trusted my intuition and not having waited an extra couple of days for Dr. Long and her lovely bedside demeanor for my baby girl cookie. So how did all this lead to my baby girl, my actual baby girl and daughter? Well, it would take a few more years just to highlight a few things on the way. I could not live without dog after Cookie died. In my grief, I would tell myself I just wanted to go home and snuggle with Cookie, except Cookie wasn't there. So I called her breeder to find out if she knew of any pug rescues. She did not, but Pat the Pug Lady told me she was expecting a new litter of black puppies in early September. Long story short, two boy puppies were born the morning of September 11th. I met them when they were five weeks old and fell in love with the one with a little white strip on his chest. Turns out their father was Beethoven, the boy puppy I had considered when I chose Cookie instead. And this boy puppy was just like his father, a mama's boy and a snuggler. And this time I was ready for that kind of personality. When he was 12 weeks old, I was able to separate him from his mom and bring him home. While I was waiting for this boy puppy to get old enough, I would go on walks that I used to take with Cookie in Riverside Park on the promenade. And I asked Cookie, what should I name him? I couldn't think of any boy names. And then Cookie figured it out. I love Humphrey Bogart and Lauren McCall and I have a few framed studio photos of them. So my little boy puppy was named Humphrey DeForest Bogart Mendez and I call him Bogey. When Bogey was about to turn one year old, I was a few months into a new job with Merrill Lynch down in the World Financial Center on the Hudson River. I had been commuting on the subway from the Upper West Side all the way downtown. I started to wonder what I was doing at 41 years old, living by myself in the co-op apartment I had bought a few years before. Yes, yeah, sure, the Upper West Side is beautiful. I lived on Riverside Drive on 79th Street by the Boat Basin and within blocks of fabulous restaurants, shopping and great grocery stores. But I was surrounded by families, their nannies and a whole bunch of single older than me women who were living alone. These were not my people. Where were my people? Turns out they were downtown in the financial district. Post 9-11, many banks and financial institutions moved their headquarters or spread out their employees in multiple locations. And those office buildings had been converted into luxury rental apartments. I chose 37 Wall Street, which is a half block from the New York Stock Exchange and next door to Tiffany. Nothing like having a little retail therapy, coats, if needed right next door and living a 15 minute walk away from the office. I sold my co-op for the price I wanted to list it for, which was 10,000 more than what my realtor, realtor wanted to list it for. And Bogey and I moved downtown. And the year after that was when I woke up one day at 42 years old and realized that if I was ever gonna have a baby, now is the time. And the three friends I asked to consider being the donor were all men I had met the year before. And we met because we all lived downtown. Had I never moved downtown, I'm quite sure I never would have met these men. Had I never moved downtown, I'm not sure I would have had the idea to have a baby. The thing to think about is, had Cookie not died so young, so suddenly, would I have thought to leave my co-op on the Upper West Side? Had Cookie not died so young, so suddenly, would I have considered having a baby? Bogey had filled the huge hole in my heart soon after Cookie died, but he was, and still is, at almost 15 years old now, a very different kind of dog than Cookie was. Cookie saw and loved and interacted with all people and all other dogs. Bogey ignores, literally doesn't even see other dogs, and he's only interested in humans for their hands and fingers to see if they are bearing treats. Oh, and when humans are seated, Bogey can be interested in their laps to snuggle and nap. Cookie loved her tennis balls and other toys and a good game of tug of war. Not Bogey, no interest in tennis balls or toys, not an interactive dog. So Bogey did fill a hole in my heart, 
but not the huge void Cookie left in my life in terms of personality and presence. Cookie was much more like a daughter and that I could dress her up and in the way she was a companion and gave me the sense of family. Don't get me wrong. Don't misunderstand me. Bogey is definitely family and my baby and I've always loved him to pieces. Anyway, I'm glad Bogey and I moved downtown. I'm glad I met so many people I would not otherwise have met, including the three possible donors, and especially the donor I did choose. He's the reason I have my particular daughter, Mercedes. And man, does she have a personality and a presence in our family. Even if I had had the idea to have a baby while living on the Upper West Side, I would have had to ask other friends to donate. And honestly, I have no idea who they would have been. I didn't have guy friends in my neighborhood or even at work who I could have asked. I knew some married men, but I wouldn't have felt comfortable with asking that of them and of their wives. Yeah, I'm sure I would not have Mercedes if not for moving downtown. And I'm pretty sure I would not have wanted a different lifestyle and neighborhood had Cookie not died so young and so suddenly. Knowing that can help take the edge off her loss but my daughter's presence does not replace a good cry when I relived that awful phone call in the next days and weeks while I mourned and cried and looked for the kind of comfort you can only get from another heartbeat in the home. For the past almost 15 years, I have shared my home with Bogey and his little heartbeat. And for the past 12 plus years, starting when my baby was in my belly, I have shared my belly and home with my daughter. We are a complete family of three. This has been Didi Mendez with Audacious Freedom, the podcast. Thanks for listening, and I can't wait for next time.